Raj, going back to the World Series, your thoughts on what the, these Astros have done so far this postseason? Oh, man, amazing. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's been, it's been amazing to watch these guys. Um, you know, some of the guys real consistent, the guys that weren't hitting or, uh, you, know, you know, weren't hitting, uh, somebody else stepped up and did it for them. And then those guys started hitting again. Altuve started grinding out. I mean, pitches off the plate, he would, you know, bleed them in there for base hits. And, and that's something that may get him going, uh, you know, during the World Series. And, you know, Jordan, all of them. I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing. I still think it's the, the, the uh, you know, I'm just amazed at the, the, uh, the pitching staff we have, um, the starters, the relievers, uh, everybody's filling in roles where they need to be. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's just like at the, that train we got down there at Minimate. It's moving, man. It's coming in fast and strong. And, um, you know, hopefully if anybody, is, you know, needs a little rest, they're going to get it uh, these next couple days. Actually, both teams are going to get it and get rested and uh, be able to align their pitching how they want. But uh, it, it's amazing, man. I, I mean, you're talking about they, they made a Yankee team look like a triple-A team, man. And this is a Yankees team that won 99 games, and they had to bust their butts. I mean, they had, they had a, a great season themselves, went through up and down and ended up winning the East. And, and I mean, and, and our Astros just just walked right through them. I mean, it was a, it was incredible. I don't think people fully comprehend, Roger, how how challenging it is to go in and, and and get the first two in New York. I mean, they're a desperate team back against the wall. They put some early runs on McCullers, but it just seems like with this Astros team, if you open the door just a little, whether it's Bader dropping the ball in the outfield or the misplayed double play, they are going to. I mean, you are going to feel the results of it from the Astros. Yeah, no, they just, um, you know, if you start with, if you go back to game three, there's uh, obviously our guys are a little familiar with Cole. Obviously they know how he kind of works hitters and things like that. And, and he's going to give, you know, he's going to give up some solo home runs. Uh, and, and that game, for that game to turn, which is, that's a huge game. We talked about it. Game three is a huge swing game when you're a starting pitcher in that and your team's down two. You can't afford to have any, um, any issues. And like you said, they had to miscue in the outfield. Uh, they bring in Trevino in relief, and this guy's got a 97 mile an hour sinker, and they're looking for a double play. And I'm not sure if it was the catcher's call, but he didn't he didn't shake him off. But they threw a lot of um, flat sliders that you can get the you know the bat on the ball, get it to the outfield, uh, a couple couple hits, a couple you know sack flies, whatever it is. And um, you know Stanton out there, he's a great obviously a great player. He doesn't have the arm strength. Um, and, you know, Javier, you know, they came in and they went back and forth with, um, you know, in the, in what was it, I think at the bottom of the sixth there, you know, he came out and put a, a big zero up after his guy scored. But it was, it was, it was zombie-like. Game three was zombie-like. Um, uh, Yankees' body language was horrible. Um, but, again, the Astro guys are the one doing that, just like uh, last night's game. It was, uh, you know, they score. And, uh, you know, our guys come right back and throw uh, uh, a nice one-two combination, a nice body blow here and there, and, and they, they answer with four. Yankees go up 5-4, and our guys come back and, and, and put two more up. So uh, you got a guy out there for the Yankees, Cortez, had a bad leg, and, and as soon as they went out and checked him the first time, it's like chum in the water. Our guys knew it. And then Pena hit that little tired, flat breaking ball into orbit. Um, uh, what else happened? Let's see. Um, Carpenter, they pinch in Carpenter late. This guy's beat up too. You could tell when he's running down first after he grounded out. They were looking for a Kurt Gibson moment, you know, with the Dodgers, you know, him facing Eckersley, something like that. Heroic. That, uh, but, but again, I think the Yankees punched out seven, you know, I don't know, close to 70 strikeouts. No, so they, fi- they, they, they struck out 50 times. 50. 50? 50. Well, there you go. In four, four games. games. <laughs> there you go. 50 times. Thanks for that. Yeah, I knew it was a lot. <laughs> and, felt again, like 70. You just, you, just yeah. go to our, you go to our pitchers, man. Our guys, the guys, the, the arms that we're featuring right now, they're confident and, they're, and they know their role They know and they're doing their job. And they just don't, you know, the thing I love about the uh, the pitching staff, Roger, is that they, you really just can't get a beat on them on any, in any count. 
you just don't know what's going to come from these pitchers because they they're confident to throw a variety of pitches on a variety of counts and it just seems like with the Yankees they understood look there's certain hitters who are not going to be able to hit the breaking pitch and we are going to just feature that time and time and time again but they can throw a variety of pitches for strikes and so you just can't get a beat on what they're going to be throwing at least I didn't feel like you could no, they throw. We got we got some guys that throw a, he- a heavy baseball too. You know the the the, um, the sinkers that the power sinkers that the guys are throwing. What's amazing, you know, it's still you know, and I, and I see it a lot, but it's still amazing that when you can throw that type of um, uh, sinker and have that type of movement on it with that with that type of velo. No- normally, normally when when you know, I, I was featuring a 95, 97 mile an hour fastball. When I wanted the movement, I would try and drop it down to about 91, 92, which I'd get my my max movement out of that. Say on a left hander, somebody like uh, they're going to see Harper or or Schwarzberger. They're going to see these guys coming in here, and uh, if they're you know on the plate a little bit, that's a ball that you kind of throw at their front leg and break it back. You know, let it let it uh, peel back on the inside corner. And uh, but yeah. All the guys are featuring power sinkers and really um, some great sliders. Lance threw some great um, uh, backdoor sliders or curves, whatever he calls it. It's almost like a slurp sometimes he throws it. And then he threw uh, a couple front door and sorites that uh, really locked them up. So it was, again, it was fun to watch. Um, you, it, again, when you, when you see the close-ups on TV, you can just see the confidence. And then on the other side, uh, like I had said earlier, zombie-like. I know we're getting close to Halloween, but that's what they look like. <laughs> Roger Clemens brought to you by the Daspot Law Firm here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. What about this? This Phillies team is dangerous, Rog. Um, how about – I don't know if I remember. They fired Joe Girardi. He was 22-29, and 29, 51 games into the season. They went on a 14-2 run after they fired Girardi, and they haven't, they haven't really looked back. They only won 87 games. But this is a much better team than eighty-seven, uh, uh, an eighty-seven win team. A hundred percent correct on that. They, they they're riding a pretty good high right now. Um, you'll get a, a, a good dose of uh, of uh, Philly fans when you go there. That stadium's super loud too, just like we can get uh, Minute Maid. So that'll be fun. Robbie Thompson, the manager, know very well. Robbie was with the Yankees when I was there. <clears throat> um, a great baseball man. Um, I would put him in the same category as a Jimmy Williams, who I consider one of the best baseball guys uh, around. Um, You know, uh, Morgan Innsberg and Adam Everett uh, uh, credit Jimmy Williams for doing a lot, helping them a lot, not only their fielding part of their game, but just being a big leaguer. And Robbie Thompson the same way. He worked with uh, 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 my oldest son, Kobe, when he played. Uh, We were on a backfield a number of times in spring training where he was working Kobe out and – Gave him some great advice, so uh, you can tell that the team's kind of really uh, rallying around him. Similar to what I'm hearing now, a little bit from our our guys here at, here at home that uh, you know they want to win this for Dusty really bad. So that comes together great. You know, I haven't seen enough of Wheeler or Nola. Um, uh, just a little bit watching them throughout the playoffs, a little bit, but so you know it's going to be fun to watch those guys and. Um, should be interesting, but you know, right now, like I said, uh, I hope the mojo stays with the guys. Even though you know we're not playing till Friday, and uh, the mojo stays with them, and uh, and they they keep uh, keep everything going. That I mean, it's hard to it's hard to not think that they're going to manhandle Philadelphia, but uh, you never know in the World Series. If you have an enlarged prostate, it can be really dangerous, can it? Yes. So if you've got increased pressure, it could go up to your kidneys, cause kidney failure. And a lot of the symptoms are related to that pressure. So having to urinate often, incomplete emptying. So you'll go, but you don't feel like all of it came out. We want an X stream, not a low stream, right? That is what we're after here is an X stream. <laughs> if you think you have an enlarged prostate, one place to go, 975prostate.com. Oh, no, no. Uh, you know, the rest for both teams, Roger. I mean, it's... Uh, both teams are red hot. Uh, there's only three teams now that have gone seven and zero in the postseason, and uh, as they head to the World Series, it's only happened. The other two have lost, but this much time off, do you you worry about that for both teams getting this much rest? 
Yeah, I mean, you, you, it, it always creeps in. Now, that, those stories will those stories will creep in that it, when somebody's you know when teams are you know feeling this much uh, momentum. You know, again, I've I've always said you know baseball has this momentum swings big time. It's not as it's not as what you see like in the NBA. I mean, you see guys go down you know by ten, twelve, fifteen points in the NBA, and next thing you know, a commercial break and the game's tied. Um, it, uh, it's, it's not that big of a swing in, in Major League Baseball, but uh, yeah, you can you can if you had certain guys that need it, that's one thing. I would imagine. I don't know the workout schedule, but they're going to have to work out for media at least uh, the day before and probably two days before. But um, you know, they're professionals. Everybody knows how to get ready. Uh, the Astros wouldn't. Uh, you know, they the, the guys. You know what they've done over the last three or four years, six years, really. Uh, you know, with some of these guys that know what they're doing, but uh, you know, again, you got to look at it when they, when they're when they're uh, when you have this quality of baseball, this high level of baseball in our city, um, you you also have to give massive credit to the front office and uh, Mr. Crane and everything that they're doing. They they've got a good game plan. They stick with it, and uh, and it shows with the the quality of players that we have. Roger, you've had uh, eight games in the World Series that you've pitched. You've been in a variety of of World Series, what's it like headed into a World Series when you think as a as a star level player, which you were dating all the way back to '86, um, in, in your first year? What's it like to think about what it means for your legacy? Do you ever give yourself a chance to think about, boy, if I perform really well and I've grown up loving this sport forever, I've got a part in history if I'm a winner? Do you do you give yourself time to think about that when you're a player headed into a, a World Series? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you think about um, you think about all the great the, some some of the, the the great players that I played against in the '80s and '90s, uh, 2000s too. That that uh, were great players and never experienced one game of postseason play. When you know they always talk about the lights being the brightest, or, and um, there's a finality to everything. You know that if you know you make a mistake or two or you blink. Similar like the Yankees did, that you're you're done, and um, you got somebody like Harper's in there all the time, and uh, uh, you know you got um, there's different guys. I remember you know the same thing that when Matt back in the uh, '80s with Don Mattingly, um, you got different guys that you think about that never had that opportunity. But yeah, playing in the World Series is is special. Um, these next couple days. Um, It'll be great that there is a little break because you can, as a player, you can get all your tickets in order and family and friends and get everybody in order who's going where and who's doing what. And then when you go down to that clubhouse and walk through that clubhouse door with your second family and all your teammates, that's where you can concentrate and focus on these next uh, these next games that are coming up. Cause they're gonna it'll it'll happen fast. It, it'll. Uh, even though it seems like a long time for us as a player, it's going to go by really fast. And uh, you're just trying to get everything in order so you can focus on what you're supposed to be doing, um, you know, once that first pitch is thrown. You know, you, man, you had to grind in in, uh, in 05 when you guys made it. I remember Andy saying after the series was, he said, I, I, if I had to pitch again, I, I don't know, my arm would have fallen off. I'm, I was done. I was done. And you had to grind all year because they never scored more than a run or two for you all season long. So you were out there, you know, pitching seven, eight innings of, of really tough baseball. This is different for Verlander. Verlander's been there to, to, before too, Raj, where by the World Series, he was worn out. This is yep. a little bit different for him. He's got to. He's going to be fresh. Everybody should be fresh coming up here. Yeah, good point, John. I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was really gassed. Uh, once, um, actually, August hit, I was dragging, so I quit doing my. I had a little uh, two mile run that I would come out of the back of the stadium there at Minute Maid. I still enjoyed doing my distance running in the heat here at home, and it just made my um, to be able to sweat like that. It made my body feel better. I could get the junk out of my shoulder and legs. And I had to cut, and I had to quit doing that. Uh, Gene Coleman, uh, Doc was there, and and I said, listen, I got to start getting in the, the the swimming pool a little more and do more therapy work. I started doing more band work and cuff work, and I'm sure uh, uh, JV, I'm sure Verlander is, is doing that same thing too. Your body's just different, you know, uh, as you get a little bit older, you try and save it. That's you know pretty much. Uh, the latter half of my career, whatever team I was with, they were trying to keep an eye on my pitch count to 
because they knew we were going to play in October and they were trying to keep me fresh. But, um, yeah, you, you, you grind right through these. And when the weather starts to turn a little bit, uh, you know, when they go to Philly, and the, if it's a little bit cooler, that's a, a plus plus on a pitcher's legs. You know, when it gets a, a little cool, it, you, know, you, can, you feel like you can, you know, throw 150 pitches because you're not out there and uh, you just don't feel like you get as tired. So a lot of factors will figure into it. And, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this time of year you, you take a deep breath and, and uh, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be some tough games, two-to-one games. Throwing a hundred pitch, hundred and ten pitch game and winning two to one, your body feels totally. You can throw the same game and win six to one, a hundred and ten pitches and win six to one, and the next day your your back and shoulder feels and your legs feel so much differently because there's not a pressure on every single pitch that you throw. That you know, if you, somebody launches one on you, you're you know you're on the, the bad side of it. So. That's Roger Clemens every day after a playoff game, and now we're into the World Series. Uh, Roger will join us right here. It's brought to you by the Daspit Law Firm, D-A-S-P-I-T Law.com. Roger, thanks for joining us again, and look forward to catching up after World Series games. Thanks for having me, guys. Let's go now. 